How's it going, super friends? Welcome back to the channel. As luck would have it, when I went to the Walmart just this morning, grabbed myself a package of toilet paper on account of we just ran out and I didn't want to have to use my sock, or worse, my underwear, ooh, I happened to find the Batman classic TV series Batman, Robin, and Batmobile. Talk about a lucky find. I wasn't even going there on the action figure hunt. I mean, yes, every time I go to Walmart, I have to take a trip down the figure aisle just in case. But this time, this was like finding gold. Adam West and Burt Ward shaped bat gold. And honestly, after Mattel had their crack at a 1966 Barris designed Batmobile, I figured that would be the last we ever would see of this Batmobile in the toy aisle in this kind of scale, but nope. Old Toddy Boy decided to pick up the torch and see what he could do with the license. And my goodness, if looking at these three items based on the Batman classic TV series in front of me in their package is any indication of what we're gonna get, I am really stoked to be making this video. So let's start by removing the car and looking at the figures. Now, both of these figures have very similar box art. Simplistic, classic, retro styling on a card with a bubble, while the backs showcase the figures inside of the Batmobile and the Batcave playset. Now, I didn't find that in my Walmart, and I don't think I will. Even when it comes to Christmas time, I'm probably gonna have to drive 45 minutes to the nearest Toys R Us. And you can see an image here and also here of both Batman and Robin. These aren't the actual figures. And why are the strings not painted yellow? And where are their capes? Ah, it doesn't even matter. We want to open these up. Okay, Minton Carters, this is your warning. Things are about to get ugly. I got to rip these guys off the cards. Actually, I don't have to rip him off because I bought another one. I know, I'm that guy. I'm not usually that guy, but this time I was that guy. Sorry. But Robin, you are coming off that card. Uh, 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 carnage! Car cartage! Oh, he's got a seatbelt. Hang on. Just pull out my super sharp implement of cutting stuff, and then try desperately not to cut the toy. All right, here we go. Uh, uh, uh. It's supposed to be super sharp. <laughs> what? Why, why did that take so long? This is pretty much a brand new blade. And here they are, the dynamic duo. Both of the figures also come with these clip-on action effects. Kapow! Pow! Wham! Bam! Before we look at each figure individually, let's clip these on them and, and, and look at those and then get them out of the way, and then we'll move on to actually looking at the figures. It's funny how these things attach. They just attach on their wrists like they're really large, awkward bracelets. And although it is slightly strange that Todd decided to include these punching sound effects, as opposed to say batarangs or the bat shield or anything else like that, which probably means they're going to be coming with other iterations of these figures, like repaints or something, these things are still pretty cool. Okay, so off screen, I have fiddled with these toys just a little bit in between the last thing I filmed. And I, you know what? These are the Batman and Robin action figures based on the beloved classic 66 show that I used to watch every single day after school that I wish I had as a kid. Both of their face sculpts actually look reasonably like the actual actors Adam West and Burt Ward. And considering the eyes are so small, I think that they're actually painted on quite reasonable. And looking up close, starting with Robin, I can tell you that if you remember watching my video when these were revealed, I kind of talked about them. I was kind of hard on this Robin figure because the scale of this Robin's head just looks a little bit bulbous, but it actually serves to make him look more like a kid. And I am loving the fact that almost none of the detail had to be painted on. For example, the gloves, and the sleeves, and the pixie boots, and even his green shorts. Well, they're all molded in green plastic, and then you have the skin color legs and arms that have been fit together into those green parts. Same thing with the tunic, and even the bottom of the tunic. They're molded in a red plastic. Which means, as kids bang these around and play with them, because this is the target intended audience, kids, these won't get scuffed up. You won't end up with massive amounts of paint scuff. 
Robin's utility belt looks good enough. The strings have been painted well. The R on the tunic there looks good. The only thing I'm not super keen on with these figures is the capes of both of them, but I do understand that these figures are intended to be you know, more classic style throwbacks. They weren't intended to be something that is a super high quality adult collectible. Even though you know it's gonna be mostly adults that buy these. Although I will point out that the bottom of Robin's cape has scallops on it, and why? <laughs> Robin's cape never had scallops back then. But overall a fantastic looking figure, and you know what? Again, I may have been a little bit hard on these figures. They're actually articulated pretty well too. Like you've got elbow articulation that also rotates, but you've also got articulation right here at the top of his glove and also at the wrist. So there's actually quite a bit of articulation in the arms, nothing in the torso, but you do have waist rotation. You have your basic forward and backward hinge for the legs of both of these figures. You have single jointed knees that crunch up better than some double jointed knees if I'm being honest and they rotate side to side like that so very very cool and one last piece to check uh, I did not assume his pixie boots would have rotation nonetheless fan friggin-tastic and of course the heads on a ball joint <laughs> As for Batman, the first thing I'm going to point out is just be careful when you get old Batsy out of the package. His little horns here are squeezed and pointed in because of the packaging. So you just got to heat them up with some boiled water and they'll stand straight up again like they were molded in the first place. The Batman figure itself, the colors look really nice. This blue really pops off of this light gray. And they really made that bat on his chest big enough to make it just pop. He's got his great big utility belt there with the gold buckle right in the middle. I think the only thing that would make these figures cooler is the zipper line being in the back here. That was show accurate. Also, I'm liking what they did right here with all the bunching up at the bottom of his cowl and also the seam lines that go up the back like that and then continue over the top. This face, this cowl looks ridiculously like Adam West. And I really like all the subtle wrinkles and detailing in his gloves and also in his trunks down there. This really does look like the Adam West Batman. I love these boots. You can actually see the lines at the top of the boots. This is a truly fantastic looking Batman figure. And just like Robin, he's fairly well articulated. Head is on a ball joint. Doesn't really behave like it that much. It might as well just be on a peg. And then you got your shoulders, which rotate back and forth. They're on the hinge. You got the single jointed elbow that can go up more than 90 degrees. And of course, it can rotate. You have articulation at the top of the glove, articulation right here at the wrist. You've got your basic waist swivel, obviously nothing in the torso. Just like Robin, your simple forward and backward hinges, so there's no outward motion. That's the only thing that, as much as I'm not gonna knock these figures for not having it, I do kind of wish there was a little bit better groin articulation. But again, I do understand that these guys aren't intended to have that level of articulation. The knees for Batman, they go, eh, I would say that's just over, just over 90 degrees, which is pretty good. They click into place, and of course they rotate back and forth like that at the knee, and the top of the boot does a knit. It does nothing. But, but you know what? For figures that have been generally intended for a child audience, again, even though I know it's going to be us adult collectors that pick most of these guys up, they are still fairly well articulated. And now let's do some comparisons. On the left, we have Funko's attempt at a classic TV series Batman figure based on the appearance of Adam West, and on the other side, we have Mattel's version at creating one and the same. I would have put the NECA figure in here somewhere, but the problem is, it broke. <laughs> That's the thing. It's broken. Now I gotta say, having both the Mattel and the McFarlane version of Adam West as Batman, I, I feel like this one is just overall a better take on the character. The proportions for the body actually look better. The face looks better. It's just, it's just a better product. The only thing that this version from Mattel has on McFarlane's is it definitely has superior articulation because you've got right up here with a thigh cut, you have ankle articulation on this one. You do have an ab crunch, but 
the body proportions on this figure I've always thought were strange, off-putting even. And then here we see this figure in between two more Mattel versions of Batman. This is more for the size comparison. I, I know that both of these have been customized. The point is, both of these are classified as 6-inch scale, and so is this Batman. So, I suppose what we get out of this is that 6-inch scale has quite a bit of variance. And then now we have him in between one figure that is Todd's typical scale for the figures that he makes with the DC license, the 7-inch scale. And no, that, that head didn't come on the body. I put that there. And yes, it's a rotten mess. <laughs> I need to repaint it. And then, the Batman figure that was my stand-in for Adam West as a kid. This Batman figure served as my comic book version of Batman, and he also served as my Adam West version of Batman. And now let's compare dicks. First, I've got him wedged in between Burt Ward Robin, made by Mattel to go with the gangly legs Batman, and one of my personal favorites, the DC Universe Classic version. In my opinion, this is probably the best looking dick I have. And now why not put him between two firsts? My first Dick Grayson Robin from the Superpowers Collection, 1984. And first appearance, Dick Grayson Robin from DC Direct. And yes, just in case you're wondering, I did actually do a cape swap with this Robin. I couldn't stand that great big yellow bulky two-layered wired cape that came with this figure. Fantastic figure, horrible cape. Okay, so now that we've looked at both the Batman and the Robin action figures, let's get to looking at the Batmobile. And this thing is quite fantastic. It comes in the same sort of very simplistic orange and blue packaging that the action figures come in. And it is nice that you can see the car pretty much all the way around except for the other side right there on the store shelves. It would be kind of cool if this was more covered, at least on the top, just in case anything falls on top of it in the store and damages the car. On the other side, all the way around, on the back, we have some more fantastically designed rear box art showcasing the car, two of the prototype figures, sitting in the prototype Batmobile, and also Batman and Robin and the Batmobile nestled inside of the Batcave playset. So let's get this George Barris beauty out of the box and have a closer look at it, shall we? Woo! And here it is, the Barris-mobile. This is probably the most recognizable Batmobile on the planet. What with its completely black paint job and sleek red lines, red bat symbols on each door, along with a great big red light on the top, instantly recognizable three exhaust tubes sticking out of the back of the car, right behind the rear windshields. You got the turbine right in the middle there, with both of the parachutes packed along either side. The instantly recognizable front end of the Batmobile. Is there a more iconic look for the front end of a car? The great big windshield in the front that shields Batman and Robin's face from getting constantly and repetitively pelted with insects. Yep, McFarlane has done a pretty swell job in reproducing most of the details for that classic Batmobile. I personally really like how crisp the detail is on the front end of this car. Another kind of neato, nifty thing about this Batmobile is the fact that it's actually got rubber tires with treads on the bottom. I can't tell you if these treads are show accurate, but it is certainly very cool that this Batmobile has rubber tires. For the rear end of this Batmobile, you'll notice that the turbine goes directly into the body. It's a separate piece. And if you've got kids and you're worried about these breaking off, they won't. They're actually a semi-soft, kind of rigid, but still very bendy, pliable rubber. Along with the steering wheel, and also the lights on top of the car. I will say it would be kind of cool if the bat on the rims was painted red, and if some of the inside details were perhaps a little bit more show accurate. When compared side by side with the Mattel version, while the McFarlane Batmobile seems to have a really crisp front end with lots of really clear details, the Mattel version actually has that slit up the front where the, the blade, the, 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 the car knife was supposed to come out of. And the yellow portions of their headlights are actually completely different. The Mattel version actually has the outline of where the hood would open if this were a real car, and the little radio antenna behind it is actually much bigger than the McFarlane version, which has a smaller antenna, and 
absolutely no hood outline where you would open it up whatsoever. You'll also note side by side that the cockpits of the Mattel version versus the McFarlane Toys version are actually fairly different. I kind of feel like Mattel takes the cake as far as inside of the cockpit details and paint job go. It's the little things, you know, like the bat on the side of the fire extinguisher, the painted bat emblems on the seat belts, and just the general size of the bat phone, as well as all the paint details on the inside of the Mattel version of this Batmobile. Heck, with the Mattel version, we even get emergency bat turn lever and a much more defined set of lights on the top. And with the Mattel version, there's actually emphasis on the metal rim that goes all the way around the cockpit, even detailing the little rivets right there. And again, from the rear, both of these cars are actually quite different. You can see with both cars, the detailing is just not the same. I personally like how the Mattel version has a license plate there, 2F3567 Gotham, 1966. While this Batman is apparently driving without a license. Breaking the law, breaking the law. Anywho, the point of comparing the two here is not to say which one is better, but to show that if you already have the Mattel version and you buy this version, you're not getting the exact same car. You're actually getting something different. So it is indeed worth picking up this Batmobile, even if you already have the Mattel version. So now I suppose the next big question would be, how do these guys look in the Batmobile as far as scale goes? I kind of feel like it may just be a tad too stubby, but honestly, I, I don't know. I'm used to the other one that's actually longer and narrower as far as scale compared to this one, which is... It seems maybe a tad shorter and stubbier, but, but I don't know, this could be perfect for these figures. Let's just get them in there. And really, the question is going to be, if you have kids, and you're buying this for your children, how easy is it going to be to wedge Batman in there and shove his cape in there? Jeez, Adam. You gotta go on a diet. Your belly's all round and stuff. Doesn't fit behind the steering wheel. Never mind. I wasn't trying to fat shame you. You fit perfectly fine. And next it's Robin's turn. Let's get get him in there. Shove his cape. Get your cape. There you go. And the cape in there. Perfect. All right. And there we have it. Oh, well, there's something that looks kind of wonky about this. <laughs> Their heads stick out qu quite far above the windshield. So why do they have a windshield? They're going to get bugs in the face. That is that is kind of a strange little oversight that their heads would be higher up than the windshield. I suppose that is a scale issue. Yeah, having them in the car, sitting in the car like that, I suppose, yeah, now maybe the scale looks a bit odd. A little bit weird. Hmm. I am curious. Let's get these guys out of the car. And I know that this is a review for McFarlane's Batmobile, but just for argument's sake, let's see if they'll fit in this Batmobile. Oh boy. Oh. Look at that. He's in the car properly. The windshield's actually doing its job. Let's stick Robin in there too. Get in there, boy wonder. Get. You just gotta just sit. You just gotta, there you go, stuffed you in there. Okay, so, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> uh, this Batmobile right here is probably a little bit more in scale with these figures, perhaps. That makes me wonder if the Funko Batman would look better in this Batmobile. I never did pick up the Funko Batmobile. There was a pack that had Batman and Robin on the Batmobile, and I just never picked it up for some reason. I saw it at a comic convention and just walked on by. I had limited cash and I just didn't didn't grab it. All right, let's get him in there. He's got a rubber cape. So this is this is kind of a pain in the butt. Hang on a second. Why don't we pop his head off and then just take his cape off for a second, put his head back on and put him in the car. Nope. See, he's definitely too small. <laughs> he looks like a like a bat child. Like he needs a bat car seat or a bat booster seat in this this Barris Batmobile, the Barris Mobile. Well, I was just checking. I had to check. Didn't know if it was a good idea or a bad idea. Apparently, bad idea. Heck, 
even one of the bestest Batmobiles ever. The Superpowers Collection Batmobile. Batman actually sits right behind the windshield there. The scale for this is like, this is perfect. Anyway, it doesn't really matter if the scale is perfect with this Batman and Robin and Batmobile, because this is primarily designed for kids. Although to be fair, I don't know how many people 12 and up still play with action figures anymore. Nonetheless, this is still very cool that it exists, and I still feel very, very lucky that I found these two at my local Walmart while on a toilet paper run, no less. I didn't even want to leave the house. I just, I just didn't want to run out of toilet paper and have to use my sock more than I didn't want to leave the house. And yeah, I, I think that this line is going to be fantastic. I was really kind of tough on these guys in the first place because I really didn't understand that this was supposed to be what it is. Kind of retro-ish and nostalgic and, you know, its own sort of thing. So I really do like these. Honestly, Super Friends, if you're out on the hunt in the wild and you see these guys hanging on the pegs, you probably won't need me to tell you to buy these. You'll see them, and you won't be able to resist the urge to pick them up and put them into your hungry shopping cart. Because any pictures you see of these things online really aren't doing any justice to what's actually been released. These are pretty fantastic. Anyway, that's all for me today, super friends. Have yourself an awesome day, and take care. Bye for now.